guys, welcome back to Home Theater Gurus. In this episode, we're gonna be building the baddest subwoofer kits available. These are the Devastators. We have two of them in here, and they come in at a whopping 448 pounds. So we're gonna go ahead and unpack it, and when I actually start building it, I'm, I'm gonna put the first one together myself, and then the second one I'm gonna film, and I'm gonna time it, so that way y'all can actually get an idea of just how long it takes to put one of these together. As you see, everything is CNC cut. Very nice, everything is labeled. So uh, there's two kits in here. It's probably why there's two sevens. And this kit is in birch. All right, so everything's unpacked. Let's go over the tools you're gonna be using today. We're gonna be using a brad nailer. I like this baby here from Ryobi. I've been using it for a couple years. Love doing uh, kits with brad nails and glue. I've been doing using those for probably 15, 20 years I've been brad nailing. I started off you know, with clamps, but it's just so slow. Uh, I mean, if you just wanna get it done, that's the way to do it. So we're gonna be using that. I've got some brad nails we're gonna be using that are, what are these, inch and a quarter, and that way I can uh, nail two pieces of three quarter together without having to worry about it punching through the other side. So that's the brad nails we're gonna be using. We got a little rubber hammer, a little mallet. You know, we're gonna need that and glue. We're gonna need a lot of this glue. I think they recommend Tight Bond 3. I just happen to have Tight, tight Bond 2. Yeah, they do recommend Tight Bond 3. It has a little bit longer working time, but I mean, I just happen to have a whole gallon of this on hand and you are going to need more than this. Like I said, I've got a gallon of it. All right, so we've got a gallon of it here and you're gonna see me filling this little puppy up several times through the build because we're gonna be using the glue liberally. I mean, that's what's holding this kit together. The brad nail is just kind of holding it, you know, while it's gluing, but I mean, that's what's gonna give it its strength. So we're gonna make sure we're using plenty of glue. So actually I put the first kit together yesterday, so I used probably a quarter of this gallon, so basically a full quart of glue on that first one. So definitely get your little small bottle of glue in a gallon. All right, and there's gonna be a few steps in here where we're gonna have to spread the glue between panels. And I like to use uh, a V-Dance trowel for that, just to get it kind of an even surface of glue all over. Just, you know, we want plenty of glue. We wanna make sure we're not using too little glue. We can't really use too much. And we've got a wet rag. And that's gonna be where we use too much. If it's dripping in the wrong place, we're gonna wanna wipe it up. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so after you order your kit, go online to the GSG website, and you're gonna download and print your manual here. Now you do need to read this manual. It just gives you a little bit of stuff about dry fitting, you know, before you uh, actually place or glue the panels together. You know, your workspace, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just some good information, especially if you've never done a kit before. Nothing very difficult, just some kind of things to think about. And I almost forgot, you are gonna need a square in a few spots. So just think two or three times what they tell you to make sure that the panels are square. You know, I've got a bunch of squares on hand. If you don't have that, I mean, you can actually use like a book I mean, anything that gives you a nice right angle, you could use for this if, uh, you know, if you had to and didn't have a square on hand. I mean, honestly, you know, we could use this as a square to square something up, so. Okay, so step one, we've got the little ring right here with a driver mounting recess. You're gonna have several panels that look kind of like this, you know, kind of round. You know, we've got this one, actually, I think I've got like three, might be four of them. This is the only one that has a recess, so it's pretty easy you know, to, to see, to make sure you get the right one. So this one's got the recess. We're gonna put the thinner side that way. So let's see, we've got our number one here. This is what we're gonna, I guess, call the top. So we're gonna put this little thin side this way. And they do suggest that you get the little half inch dowels and they go through these holes right here and into these holes. And that just makes sure that it's perfect. Now, I don't have any dowels on hand, but it is a really good idea to go ahead and purchase them. They're very, very cheap. You know, if you just go buy some from the Lowe's or Home Depot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply glue here to this surface. And then when we set it, we're gonna make sure that, you know, we're even, nice and flush all the way around here, that our edges look nice and square, look down those holes, make sure they're lined up really well. So let's go ahead and get that done. So now we're going to take our rag and clean it up. Okay. Step one is done. All 
right, we're gonna set this off to the side. All right, we've, uh, we're on page eight, we've done page eight, we've done page nine, that was just to put the dowels in. We didn't have the dowels. Okay, now we're on page 10. Okay, we're gonna make the hatch. Now this is the hatch, the access hatch. So after this is done, because the type of sub it is, the driver is gonna be hidden inside, and this is gonna be your access panel. So that is, well, that's the little, the square with the arrows and the crosses is pretty easy to find. Here it is. All right, so I'm gonna position it with the arrows, kind of like it is in the picture here. Okay, so you're gonna have two this size and then one a little bit longer. And this thing fits together like a puzzle. I mean, it really fits together awesome. And if you look from above, these grooves right here are offset and this is offset. I mean, just try it different ways and you're gonna quickly see how it goes together. And this is just dry fitting to make sure everything looks good. And it does. Let's go ahead, take it back apart and start gluing. Inside there. All right, if you guys saw me just flip that just now, the little edges, it was hanging up on one edge, like overhanging, I couldn't get it to sit, so I picked the whole thing up, flipped it around, and it went in fine. So if you run into that, just try flipping it around. And now we've got everything is down all the way, seated, we're looking good. So we're gonna go ahead and set this over on the side to dry. All right, so for the next step, we're now on page 11. We need panel six, and we've got two long braces. Let's go find those. All right, and if you look at the instructions, at the top, it's gonna to be flush and we're gonna overhang like here's the six facing up, we're gonna be overhanging this way. So I just wanna to try to get that situated and oriented before I, uh, you know, as I set them up here. All right, our little nubs are up. You let's see in the instructions, it says this end's gonna be flush. And it fits like a glove. Now, as you could probably tell when I was taking this out, I mean, I actually had to fight it out a little bit. I mean, that's how tight and pre precise these cuts are. They're very, uh, very impressive. And again, we're gonna make sure that we're putting plenty of glue in there. We want it to ooze out a little bit. Okay, now you'll notice on this one, if you turn to page 12, okay, at the top, be sure the braces are square. You know, so for our square, we could square it up like this. Or, you know, we could use this, see? That matches up exactly with the same thing we got, or, you know, from this. These two are both, either one of those are gonna work. And like I said, you could use a book. Heck, we could use this page right here to square it up. You know, well, get a single piece of paper and you could use that. Okay, now I am gonna pop a few brads in the bottom of this, just because I'm gonna be handling it. I'm not gonna be waiting for it to dry. I want to get it done. And again, make sure those are flush. I should have checked that before I Brad nailed it, but it's good. Okay. Let's go ahead and check it one more time. Make sure it's square. Sludge it over a little bit. Okay, now 
We're on page 13, port braces. And again, I'm gonna look at my orientation of the number three here and make sure my panels and, you know, keep everything just like it is in the pictures here. Less room to screw it up. Okay, so we've got our number three like that. Now there's a little message here, align the braces so the part that sticks up, which is this, is towards the end with the dado. So this is our dado right here on this end, just like in the picture. Okay, so they're gonna go in just like that. Nice tight fit. Turn to page 14, and this end is gonna be flush. It doesn't say it in the instructions to square this panel up, but again, this is what's gonna be visible. So, I mean, if it's off a little bit, it's not gonna hurt anything as far as function goes, but you're, you may notice it, so I'm gonna kinda square them up. I'll just check them, they look good. All right, I'm gonna pop a few brads in it. Again, if you're using a brad nailer, make sure that it's right. Of course, even if you're gluing and clamping, once the glue sets up, you're not moving it anyway. All right, now I'm not worried about much about the glue in these cracks. I mean, if you wanted to, cause you know, this part is gonna be visible. You know, so you can take your rag up in there, just kind of clean that out. You know, you don't have to get it all out, maybe just knock it down so it's smooth. I do wanna make sure this dado right here is cleaned out, so I'm gonna clean that glue out. Right there, just so it's not piled up. Especially if you're doing this over several days, you come back to it. You know, you don't have to chisel it out. Okay, this panel's done. Page 15. We need panel five. And panel five has two little braces. Those should be pretty easy to find. There's only two of them that look like that. Now you'll notice there's a note right here and the Music Devastator will not have this uh, panel five. This panel is extending the port so it's, it's tuning the home theater subs a little bit lower. So if you don't have this in there, it's because you got the music devastator, not the home theater devastator. So but we have the home theater one, so we have this panel. All right, again, we're gonna position it just like in the picture. Five is this way. Okay, we've got those like that. Okay, then we've got a panel seven. All right, so here's panel seven, and right above that big note at the top of page 15, you'll notice it says if you're gonna be using the speak on to put this in. This is a little speak on adapter. So if you weren't using the speak on, let's look at it. This is gonna be the outside of your sub right here. So the speak on adapter, you're gonna have that, and your speak on is gonna sit right inside that recess. If you're doing it like a terminal cup, the terminal cup would uh, mount right over that. All right, so we're gonna glue the speak on adapter in. Okay, just kind of give a little wiggle. Kind of get it even, you know, left a little gap in the circle right there. Just kind of get an even space around it. Okay. All right, I'm gonna set panel seven off to the side for just a minute so I can glue this in. Glue these little braces on there. Pop a few brads in them. And then I'll attach them to panel seven. In case you're wondering, yes, the brad nails do hold tension. Now we'll get panel seven. I'm gonna lay it down. We're gonna put the glue in there and the dado and stand it up and glue it in. There we go, just like that. Make sure you're really good and flush over here. See, I need to tap it. With all that glue, it's kinda, kinda hard to move it with your hand, so give it a little tap. And one cool thing, if you have a panel hanging over and you hit with a, a maul or a rubber hammer like this, you hit it right on that edge, it's gonna kind of level them up together because as you're hitting, only one of them's gonna be sticking out a hair more than the other. It kind of helps you, you know, don't hit it too hard, just kind of tap it, it'll flush them up for you. All right, let's see where we're at. 
Okay, page 16, it's just gluing together what we just did. It does say to make sure everything is square, so I'm gonna go take my square over there real quick and verify that panel five is square with panel seven. All right, so now we're on to page 17. All right, page 17, access hatch mounting support panels. Each of these has six holes, apply glue. And I did check with GSG on this one, apply glue to both panels. I took that as they were wanting to put glue on both sides and then stick them together. That would have been, you know, a lot of glue. And they verified it just, you know, you're gonna be gluing these pieces together. So, we, you know, we need a good layer of glue. So we're gonna use our same method we used a while ago with our V-notch trowel. All right, we're gonna look at our picture here and See the arrows are all up, so we're gonna make sure we're doing it the exact same way. They've got the, the piece with no notches in the side. See this one here has notches in the side, so this one doesn't. All the arrows are gonna be pointing the same direction. All right, and then we've got our holes, six holes. All right, so let's glue these two together. We're gonna to apply glue to the smaller one so we're not getting glue all over the big one for no reason. Flip it over and put our glue on. All right, let's flip it over. Got a little carried away with the glue on that last one. I put a little too much, but that's okay. We'll just let it squeeze out and do a little cleanup. All right. Yeah, definitely time to clean that rag. All right, so now I gotta clean up my mess I made. All right, so we've got this cleaned up. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it off to the side. Well, page 18 is, you know, what we just did. They show using the dowel pins. Again, it is definitely worth your time to get these dowel pins. And I'll have all these descriptions for the dowel pins, the speaking on connections, all that stuff is gonna be down in the description of this video. All right, now we're really getting to something. So we're gonna find panel 10, which is a side panel. So it's gonna be a very large panel. And we're going to attach panel one and panel two to it. So let's get that going. Find panel 10. Okay, panel two. It's going to sit there. All right. And then panel one, we're going to put in that groove there. Let's go ahead and grab that. Okay, now again, we're going to do it just like in the picture. So this is what we did in step one, where we glued this, the round ring to this panel one. And that's been, you know, 30 minutes or so ago. So this glue is already, it's already tacked up. And, you know, so the brad nails aren't what's holding it. Now we have the actual glue is holding it together. So it's gonna go just like this, with this ring right here that we attached, it's gonna be facing the number 10. Let's go ahead and put some glue in there. It's kind of a mess trying to hold all this stuff. I mean, you could use a second hand for this, but you don't have to. Now, when you dry fit that number 10 in there, look at how it sits. It's actually gonna push up against this edge right there, and you're gonna have a little gap back here. So when you're putting your glue in there, just kind of keep that in mind and put your bead kind of along this edge where the number 10 is all the way down. Now, I mean, it's not gonna hurt if you have, you know, a little too much glue and it pushes out into the, the gap. It's not gonna hurt anything at all. So when we dry fit this, we wanna make sure we're paying attention to our diagram. The number 10 is gonna be in that the corner away from us. The number two is gonna be next to us. And then the number one panel is gonna sit down in this groove with the number one facing us right here with the number two. Number one right here facing us with the ring that we glued on also facing us. Just pay attention to your diagram. All right, there you are. All right, so make sure panel one is seated all the way into panel two. Use whatever mallet if necessary to ensure it is all the way in. Now, if you look at the top, you'll see a little gap. Now, you don't want to hit just at the top because that's not going to do anything but push, you know, this two panel against the number one panel. We want to go from the bottom Give it a few taps, make sure it went in. I mean, I can tell it's in. I didn't even have to hit it, but just in case you do, 
If you notice something's not right, you may have to. Now, if you look at page 20, it shows you that this edge over here, let's kind of scoot the camera down or scoot, the, scoot it down so we can see. This edge is gonna stick out. This panel one is gonna stick out just a little bit into the dado of panel 10. So it's about a quarter of an inch. That's about what we've got. So if you're sticking out more than that, you know that you didn't see all the way into panel two. So you need to tap it. And if you've really got to tap it, you know, make sure you get a block of wood or something right here. You don't want to damage your edges, but I mean, you shouldn't have to because the panels are cut so well, everything just seems to fall in place. All right, so I'm gonna put a few brad nails in here and we're gonna keep trucking. All right, we're gonna make sure that we're flush on top just in case something, something wasn't right, you know, up here we wouldn't be flush and we're good. Now I do have a little bit of glue in this dado right here, so I'm gonna clean that out. So we are gonna have a panel that fits, it's gonna fit into. Okay. Now we're starting to get into some big panels here, so it would be nice to have a hand, you know, possibly. All right, so now we're gonna put panel 11 on top of this. So let's go ahead and grab panel 11. As you guys can see, it's starting to look like something. And of course, panel 11 is just a mirror of panel 10. It looks just like it. You know, the same dados are cut into it. So let's go ahead and put our glue on top of the edges here. I'm gonna glue all this and we're gonna put panel 11 on it. All right, so when we flip it down, we've got the number 10 right here. We're gonna put the number 11 right across from it. Just like a mirror image, but I'm still here. This pen right here, just like it did on number 10, it's gonna stick out about a quarter of an inch. All right, come over here. If something's not seated well, you're gonna notice it. Like over here, you know, we, our gap is nice and tight, so we're good to go. All right, for step three, we're gonna put the bottom on. That's on page 22. Now, I'm gonna flip it upside down to put this on. All right, so let's go ahead and put this bottom on. You'll notice if you look at the picture here, there's nothing, no data or anything on this side for any ports or anything else. So if you look at the other side, it's full of dados. So this is the side where our mouth is gonna be. Of course, we're upside down. And uh, so we're a little bit different than this picture. You turn it upside down and you'll, that's how we're, we're positioned right now. So our visible port is gonna be up here. So we're gonna put our bottom in, it's gonna sit right here. Okay, so let's do a dry fit first. Now you'll notice on the instructions, it says flush. This bottom has to be flush with the sides. So it's gonna go together just fine. I'm not gonna beat on it or tap it over right now. When we get that glue in there, it's gonna help kind of lube it up where we can slide it right into place. Let's go ahead and get our glue on. Now there's a very small ledge right there, so that's where all the weight's gonna sit. So we wanna make sure we get a bunch of glue or some, you know, a good bead of glue in that corner. Of course, when we push it down, it's gonna push whatever's on the side. It's gonna kind of drag it down in the corner anyway. And I'm gonna put a light bead on the side right there. We need to put some glue on these because they're gonna be sitting against that, uh, sit the wood underneath them, or I guess on top of them because we're upside down. Flush in the front, might as well go ahead and start there. Perfect. And when you get to this step, you're really gonna appreciate how well built or cut this kit is because everything goes together perfect. All right, so we've got a little rubber mallet. I'm just gonna kind of tap it back a little. We want it flush. That one's good, this one's good, perfect. All right, time to tack it in. All right, the next step, we're gonna put the front panel on. So for this one, I'm gonna lay it down, and that's also gonna help, because right now we're getting some drips and stuff. 
And uh, you know, this is gonna be visible, this front port right here. So we can kind of lay it down. It's gonna keep everything from running down and we can kind of clean it up with that inside there a little bit. So let's go ahead and lay it on its back. All right, let's get our rag. We're gonna kind of clean it up in here. We've got some drips, but you know, I really don't care because the sub's not gonna be seen, but a lot of people are gonna have these visible. So we'll just kind of wipe those drips up. They don't have to be, you don't have to get it all out. Just kind of round over the, the edges there so it dries nice. All right, so if we look at page 24, and you'll notice the panel that we put together earlier, it's flusher on one end, but the other end we've got panels or braces that come down past the panel. Those are gonna fit in these grooves. The flush section is gonna be up here at the top. Okay, now you should pre-fit all of this stuff, you know, dry fit it before we glue it. We should put it in here, make sure it's gonna fit. I already know it's gonna fit. I like living on the wild side a little, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue it up. Now this panel is gonna be flush with the top of that little edge right there where that dado is. So it's not gonna come all the way to the top here. So you don't have to get the glue, you know, any further out than that. Okay, so you notice how there's an indentation right here. We don't have to put the glue there. It's not gonna be touching there. It's only gonna make contact here and in there, you know, just the parts that stick up higher. Let's go ahead and put our glue on there. Oh, come on. I may not have enough glue in there for this. And these are braces, so uh, we do not need them to make a seal. But we still would wanna have plenty of glue. So we don't have to overkill our glue here. We just need a good bond. Make the cabinet nice and strong. Remember, hope that I do that part. I didn't get inside those dados. I need to put some glue in there. So it's probably been 45 minutes or an hour since we uh, glued this panel up right here. So we need to just kind of be a little careful with it. I've got myself in a bind here. I need to grab it a different way. There we go. Okay. All right. Man, very nice. Okay. Got a little gap down here, so we need to get that to close up. There we go. Perfect. Okay, attach the top. So we need to flip this bad boy over. All right, one thing I forgot to mention on these dados, like right here, we are gonna have panels that go in them. So during the build, you know, if you notice some glue getting in them, just kind of clean them out, keep them clean. You don't want to get any glue dumped up in there, especially if you're doing the slower method where you're clamping and letting it sit overnight. Okay, so the top is gonna be panel four. Let's go find panel four. All right, so this one's gonna be pretty easy. You'll see these little uh, cross sections here that's gonna fit on those two braces. Okay, and the part that says number four is actually gonna overhang on the front end right here. So let's go ahead and we're gonna put our glue on this stuff and then flip it over and glue it right on top. All right, on this one, it is gonna go all the way to the edge, so make sure you put your glue all the way to the end. Don't stop at the dado. Like a glove. Now we do want it flush on the front edge. We need to bring it back a little here. There we go, perfect. Okay. Now, if you have any minor discrepancies, like something sticking out of hair, you know, remember you're gonna be hitting this with a sander when you're done. Okay, so the top's on. Let's go to the next page. That is page 27. All right, I'm gonna lay it on its back for this. This is how I did it earlier. Everything else is gonna be going in on this side, so it's just easier to drop everything down into the the dados, and uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and drop it back. Okay, so we've got a lot of runs. The only thing we need to worry about cleaning up is what is in our dados. So I'm just gonna kind of wipe some of the dados out a little bit. Now, of course, if it's you're getting after it, 
you're probably going to set the panel in that dado anyway or in that uh wet glue so you could probably leave it but just in case we're going to clean them out so they don't give us any problems all right page 27 is bracing so we don't have to go crazy with the glue on this but this is what's going to help make our sub nice and strong so on these braces you're going to have two horizontals and two verticals the smaller are going to be the verticals so get your horizontals and the lower one is actually going to go in the middle groove right here not the one closest to the bottom of your port but the middle one don't make that mistake i stuck it in the wrong one and had to pull it back out because something wasn't right and you want these chamfers they need to be facing each other when they're installed because we're going to slide the vertical pieces into those uh, chamfers there we go and make sure this U section is face up. Just look at your instructions and make sure you're following those. Okay, and on this one right here, you got these two little dimples, this little cutout that's gonna go down. Chamfer again, facing that other brace we just put in. All right, so now we have these two vertical braces. And the longer section is going to go towards the driver hole. The shorter section is going to go towards the port at the bottom. Let's go ahead and get some glue in those chamfers and get those in. All right. Now, so we've got glue all in the chamfers. Let's go ahead and slide these braces in. Kind of hard to do this with one hand here. All right. Kind of excuse the shaking, I'm actually holding a tripod and everything. Now, we do have a little bit of a, you know, movement in here, so I'm gonna put a few nails, brad nails in there just to stiffen it up. All right, we are getting very close. Okay, and on page 28, they show you, you know, make sure you're flush here, which we are. We're flush all, you know, that dado at the bottom needs to be flush. This dado here, that little ridge needs to be flush with your braces we just dropped in. Okay, now we're going to put the braces over here around the driver to stiffen up these side walls. All right, so when you do these, you're going to grab two of these and one that has the arc. Now the arcs are going to go in the middle, and then these are going to fit into the grid at the bottoms like so. And then the arc, just like that. So that's your brace. If you guys didn't see that, let me do it right here so you can see a little better. Fit it into the groove at the bottom. Push it into the dado. I don't see that one didn't go down all the way. There we go. And then you're going to slide this in. Now you may need to get your rubber mallet and tap those in a little bit because it seems to be a tight fit. I'm sure they made them that way just to get it nice and snug. So, uh, you know, if you got to tap on a little bit, no big deal. Let's go ahead and pop these in. One thing I want to point out, I did put glue on these ends. You can put some on the bottom, but on the top, I forgot. You've got your plug right here that's removable, or your end, or uh, what do they call it? They call it a hatch. So, uh, you know, just kind of wipe that off. Pretend that didn't happen. Never happened. Okay. Okay, so this is what our hatch is going to mount to. So this we put together earlier. We're gonna go ahead and grab that and install it. You see, be sure arrows are pointing up. They're up and they're also facing inside the cabinet. Okay, so that's this panel. So it's gonna sit just like that. So let's go ahead and get that glue in there. Move this out of the way so the camera can see. All right, so it's gonna sit right here on this lip so we need to get glue all on that and we need glue on the bottom of this right here actually the top of it because it's going to sit against it from this side and i think there's even a note 
to make sure that you get a good seat there. And yeah, on page 32, it should slide down by a hair. It's completely sealed against this piece here. And yes, I am messy, but again, I don't want leaks. All right, so this is the panel that's gonna have to, to seal against that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put glue, really, put a bunch of glue on there. Now, one thing I wanna point out, all of these little grooves and the indentations right there, they're actually gonna sit, those little uh, braces are gonna sit into those. As you can see, I put plenty of glue right there at that seam, so we've got some squish out. Only thing better than not a gl enough glue is too much glue. Very good. Okay. Let's clean this up. All right, guys, so I cleaned this up pretty good. You know, all the glue that was sitting up here just because our hatch is gonna sit on top. So, you know, clean that up pretty good with your wet rag. Uh, just check again the ring where your driver's gonna sit and make sure there's no glue piled up on there, you know, that you're gonna have to scrape off later. So uh, we look good. Let's go ahead and finish this puppy up because we're, we're pretty much done with the build of it. One thing I want to note, you may get a little confused if you have the home theater version of the sub, you know, the, the lower tune sub, because the panel they show is the one that we put, uh, what was that, port uh, panel five and seven? Yeah, five and seven. Remember, we have a five. The one they show doesn't have it because they're showing the uh, musical, the music sub, basically, the, the one that's tuned higher. So it doesn't have that port extension. We do have it. So uh, ours is going to look a little different than the picture. All right, so my battery died. I already put this in. I just pulled it back out so you guys can see it. We've got our glue all around the perimeter. We need a good seal. We've got our top of our braces, everything. We've got glue all over the place. So we're going to go ahead and slide this into our dados there. All right, so that is actually it. We are done with the actual construction part of it. This is our hatch that we put together earlier. It's gonna sit right on top, or why does it have an arrow in there? Yes, he's got the, got the up arrows. So it's gonna sit right there and seal it after we put our driver in. Okay, it's a few weeks later. The Eminence 21s have finally come in. We have the NSW 6021-6 subwoofer that's gonna be going in this cabinet. All right, so before we install the driver, we need to go ahead and pre-drill for the hatch cover here. Now, in the GSG manual, it says to use Spanx screws and I'll have a link in the description for those screws. I just got finished building house, so I've got a ton of different screws around here. So I'm gonna use a different screw, but the, the main thing is you want a screw with a flat head, not with a tapered head, you know, so when you tighten it down, you don't want it to split the wood, because like this is birch, of course it's a plywood, you know, but you just want a nice, a flat type of head to pull the, the cover down. Okay, now when you look at your hatch, you're gonna have some arrows on it. The arrows are pointing up, uh, that hole up there is actually towards the top. I'm standing at the, what's gonna be the bottom of the subwoofer. So it's gonna go on just like this. So go ahead and lay it on there. Now, when you get ready to remove it, you know, there's nothing to really grab. So you can actually take one of your screws that you're gonna use, stick it in the hole just a little bit and kind of kick it to the side, lift up. So make sure that your panel, you know, try to get your seam somewhat even all the way around it. I mean, it falls in place pretty nicely. All right, if you're using a spank screw in the instructions here, they tell you to use a 1 8 inch drill bit to pre-drill. Now, the purpose of pre-drilling is to make sure that when you put the screw in there, you're not gonna split the wood. So you're basically gonna cut out the core of the screw and you're gonna leave enough wood for the little teeth on the edges to grab. All right, so here's a screw, it's not a spank screw. This is actually uh, a screw head with a washer on it, but you wanna make sure that your drill bit, you can actually turn it around this way. You want it to be as big as the core but when you put the bit in front of it, you want to see all of the teeth of the little edges that grip sticking beyond the bit. All we're going to do is take out the core. All 
Okay, now from the drilling, there's some places where I've got some wood, like little splinters that are sticking up and I wanna make sure that it's nice and flat. So just get a flathead screwdriver. I've got a wood chisel I'm gonna use and just kind of scrape those off flat. Do not gouge into the wood. Just kind of knock off what's sticking up. This is GSG Audio's top dog right here. So let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. Oh, and this is a, it's a heavy sucker. I think the package uh, was 50 pounds, a little over 50 pounds. So, you know, you're looking at a 50 pound subwoofer in here. All right, oh my gosh, look at this sucker. That is a thing of beauty. <laughs> this is all aluminum. Oh my gosh, god damn. Very, very magnet heavy, I wasn't ready for that. So there's a little card that comes in here with it on the back, it tells you who all made the subwoofer. But uh, it's verified by Clipple, so all this information is accurate. 21 millimeters, one way of X Max, verified by Clipple. On GSG website, they have that rated, but they also have 33.6 millimeters peak excursion. Damage point is even higher. I've heard of these being able to go up to 40 millimeters. That's pretty freaking insane, especially when you consider how much displacement you have just because of the cone being so large. You know, the total displacement is just outrageous. Twin inverted spiders for optimal linearity and low distortion. Here's, here's the thing that's just stupid. 2,500 watts continuous power, 5,000 watts program, and 10,000 watts peak to peak. That's freaking ridiculous. Now you have to keep in mind this is a 97 dB sensitivity driver. So it's already very, very loud per watt. And then when you consider that it can handle, you know, a peak of 10,000 watts, it's freaking ridiculous. I mean, this is the kind of thing you would have in an outdoor concert, you know, running the subsystem is just freaking, you know, jamming a whole audience out in a field somewhere. So that we're putting this in a, in a horn loaded type enclosure, kind of a band pass type horn, you know, the Devastator. And I mean, that this is what's going in it. It's pretty insane. All right, guys, so the first thing we need to do is take the driver and we're gonna sit it upside down inside this ring right here. Now, the Eminence has a built-in gasket so we don't have to worry about placing a gasket in there first or anything. You can see the gasket right there. So now again, be careful because it is extremely magnet heavy. Okay. Whew, all right, it's in there. Okay, again, this is the back of the cabinet. My subwoofer, my, my cable coming into the room is gonna be land right up in here. So I'm just gonna put a hole right up in this top corner. If I've done your room plan again, this would be the method that I would recommend you uh, run your cable out of your box. All right, so we're gonna take a wire, we're gonna run it through the hole. Okay, now we just need enough length here to attach to our driver. Now we need something really good to seal this up, so I, I don't wanna use some cheap painter's caulk or anything like that. So I've got some Dynaflex 230. This is some really, really good stuff. Oh, in case you guys don't know, you see that little hole right there in your caulk gun? I didn't know that. My wife actually told me that while we were building the house. I had no clue. Her dad had told her that years ago, and I was like, what? Sure enough. So, all right. All right, now I'm gonna use some T59 staples, which is actually, it's made for cables, kind of like this. So it's got a little plastic uh, saddle that gently collapses down or presses down around the cable and the staples are gonna hold it into the wood. Okay, so we've got our wire set up. We're ready to drop the driver in. There's one more step that we need to do. So in this cavity right here, we need to put some pillows. 
So the pillows are basically gonna fit in each one of these cavities. They found an issue with some resonance and these pillows are gonna take care of it. Now I got this big bag of pillows, there's six of them in here. I paid, I think it was less than $3 per pillow at Walmart. I ordered them online and uh, did the little thing where you just go to the back of the store and park in the parking spot, say I'm here on your app, on the Walmart app, and they bring them out to you. It worked great. First time I'd used that feature. Now this one right here in the middle, I wanna make sure that the bottom edge is clear so it doesn't interfere with the driver. When I set it down, I wanna make sure it's not pinched. Okay, so I'm fixing to lift the driver again now. I, it's kind of hard to, to explain how heavy the freaking magnet is. The basket and everything's all aluminum, so it's really light. The freaking magnet is just insanely heavy. It's gonna try to spin. You know, uh, you may hurt your wrist or something if you're not ready for it. I mean, seriously, it sounds kind of silly, but it's just it's so magnet heavy. So you have to be careful. It's a little bit of a wrestle. If you got a bad back, maybe get two people to help. My back's not the best, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, now I'm gonna spin it and find my holes. There we go. All right, perfect. Now, because this driver is so heavy, I'm not gonna use the same screws that I'm gonna put back here. Now, of course, if you use the instructions, you can use the spank screws for everything but I'm gonna be using some exterior type of a lag screw that I just have on hand. All right, the screws are in, let's take a look. Okay, so now I'm gonna make my connection. All right, so there we go, we've got our pillows are in there. We've got our wire, it's all nice and tidy, we don't have to worry about it hitting anything. Drivers. The driver uh, screws are all in, so uh, we are ready to go. All right, let's close it up. Well, before we do that, we have to put the gasket tape around the port right here. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, now you'll notice in the instructions, they just show the gasket tape around the outside edge. Now, my only problem with that is if air was to get past the screw, there's nothing here to seal it from getting into the cabinet. So I'm actually gonna put mine right along this edge right here. And I'll probably put some along the outside too, but I really wanna make sure that there's no way that any air that gets on this side of my gasket can escape or get into the cabinet here. All right, so I have enough gasket tape just to do this ring right here for both of them. So we're gonna call that good and go ahead and put the plug in. And this sub is gonna be ready to hook up to the amp. Man, that is a good looking subwoofer. Okay. All right, so I just lifted this thing up. It's a lot heavier with that driver in there on this end. So this is the front of our enclosure. Now, when we put this in a wall, especially like a screen wall, you know, again, if I design your room, that's where you're gonna use something like this most likely. It's not gonna be visible. So because your whole wall is either gonna be uh, all insulation, being used as a base trap, or we have a baffle wall where we have, you know, MDF or sheetrock, used to extend the baffle of the LCR. We, either one of those, we wanna put a layer of duckboard on this. We don't have to paint this cabinet. I mean, you can prime it if you want, you can paint it if you want, Duratex, whatever. You don't need to because you're not gonna see any of it. But what we do need to do is take duckboard, one inch duckboard, and come all the way down right here. We're not worried about anything down here. Just, just the face of this flat section, we're gonna cover it with duckboard. You can do it in the room if you want to, but uh, so that's how we're gonna handle the finish. So it's pretty much done except for that. Mm -hmm. 